And it's recording, maybe. So uh, if I could have your attention, you slackers back there. Okay, so I was so impressed with the uh, learning that was obvious at the uh, um, barbecue last night. I got to tell you, I was really, really impressive. It seemed to me that uh, this project, uh, of all projects I've written and assigned here at Carthage for the CS1 or CS2, that this one seems to be evoking the most progress in your understanding of programming. So I was really, really impressed. Now, I was so impressed that I want to solidify uh, the progress that I think you've been making. <clears throat> so I don't want you to uh, finish this project with a sour taste uh, in that you don't, uh, you turned in something that you really strongly feel was not your best work. So I'm going to uh, extend the project by another week. Okay? Because, again, the reason for doing this, I think you're on a roll. And I want to give you that chance to succeed the way that you want to. Um, and I think with a little extra time, you'll do that. So, uh, well, just for my own, uh, I've already told you that I'm going to extend the deadline. For my own uh, sense, uh, sense of uh, uh, all that is right in the universe, uh, by show of hands, be honest, please. How many people think they did not turn in their uh, best work? Okay, so uh, good. My my impression is uh, very uh, you know validated by the show of hands. Okay, so uh, here's here's your opportunity. Don't uh, let it go by. Okay, there's, there's a lot of great learning taking place uh, in this project. Uh, any questions about that? Does anyone object? Is anyone angry that uh, giving more time? Because there's always one. There's always one in a class. Say, so, gosh darn it, I uh, finished. Uh, that's not exactly what you're going to say, but gosh darn it, uh, I finished on time, and now everybody else is going to get a uh, chance to work some more. So if you're finished uh, and uh, you're happy with your work, let me know, uh, and you'll still have the opportunity to improve it, but, uh, but um, you know, maybe I, there's some extra additional for having done well on time, uh, there is some additional bonus that I could could potentially potentially award, okay, in recognition of you getting it right the first time on time, okay. So just come see me, uh, send me an email, etc., etc. Cetera, et cetera. So what I want to do in this class period <clears throat> is go over <clears throat> uh, a lot of debugging techniques and skills. Uh, and this is, uh, the, the, the skills that I'm going to talk about, the techniques that I talk about, uh, were, uh, evidenced by the questions that I was being asked last night. Okay. Now let's see, Sam, your VM is hosed right now, right? Okay. So, uh, uh, what I have discovered is, uh, uh, depending upon how much, uh, work you've done on the VM, Right around now, the end of the semester, is when folk, uh, people's uh, virtual disks are getting full. Uh, and the reason is <clears throat> we're leaving behind a lot of large files, temporary files that Visual Studio Code is uh, creating. So if we just go through and uh, delete a bunch of those, <clears throat> you'll have room again and you'll be able to finish out the semester. Okay. No, those are, I'm sorry, yes, uh, your older stuff will work. Uh, the temporary files are indeed temporary, and Visual Studio Code should have a way of cleaning them, cleaning itself up the way that I teach you to program. You're supposed to leave your campsite as clean or cleaner than is when you found it. Uh, code is not doing that, unfortunately. Yes, Kai? Um, I think you mentioned it earlier, but are we next semester, are we changing Yes, we are. Uh, I believe the uh, senior capstone project is now uh, working. So the idea is this. 
uh, you're going to use, no matter how, uh, what's a, a good way of putting it, uh, how um, uh, uncapable your hardware is, it's almost certainly powerful enough to run code, the VS Code natively, not in a VM. Right? So, because code itself is very lightweight. It's having the compiler and all that other stuff on your computer, which uh, slows things down, takes up a lot of room. I mean, Xcode on a Mac is 10 gigabytes. Visual Studio on Windows, 10 gigabytes. And they're very, very, they're hard to run. And I don't, I don't, more importantly, I don't want to have to support Xcode and uh, Visual Studio. I want everybody to use the same so that I can give the same quality of service to everybody. Okay. So you're going to run. Visual Studio Code, and you'll create your projects on your computer. When you hit save on your computer, uh, behind the scenes, a copy of your code is transmitted to one of our servers. And you have an account on the server, which um, um, you don't really use directly you use it via this process that i'm describing so every single person has an account on the server when you hit save automatically your file is transferred over there when you hit uh, compile uh, the remote machine is told to do the compile on the remote machine and when you debug you and you get the uh you get the compiler messages back they're shown in visual studio code as if the compile took place on your computer and then when you hit debug, uh, the program is not launched on your computer. It's launched on the remote computer. And uh, the debugger uh, is exchanging data. Debugger running on the remote machine, uh, supervising the execution of your program on the remote machine, sends information back and forth to your local machine. So it's as if you were debugging it on your local machine. And that way... Even if you have very, very, very weak hardware, you still get to do everything in the class as if it was a workstation because we have, uh, at this point, two, and I can make it into three very, very high-powered, powerful servers. And there's one more component, uh, two more components to this that makes it really cool. Um, there'll be a, uh, a uh, let's say there are three servers, three servers. There's a fourth computer, a very small computer that will, uh, that's actually the computer you talk to. Everyone talks to the tiny computer, but when you make contact to the tiny computer, it redirects without your knowledge, redirects your conversation to, it picks uh, a server at random. So what does that mean? It means if everybody's compiling at the same time, uh, the, the workload is being distributed evenly across all the servers we have. Uh, and then the final cool thing is no matter which server you hit, you're getting your files because behind the servers, there is a, uh, a network attached storage device, which uh, means that no matter which server you have logged into, uh, your home directory is the same as if you had logged into any other. So if you write a file on one machine and then you look at the other machine, it's, it's already there. There's no copying. So it's really cool. And I uh, can't wait to, to put it into use. And if you're taking classes next uh, next year and we're not using it, something went wrong. Yeah. Okay. So I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. 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 Pretty cool, huh? Okay. So uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the, the, yeah, that's uh, Travis Dillard's senior capstone. Speaking of which, I didn't do it in this class. Uh, we must, we must, we must. Uh, we must do that. Let's go to... Um, uh, sheets. Yes. Did I go over <clears throat> the schedule for the capstones? Okay, I want you to come. I want you to be there. Um, can everybody read this? Okay. We have so many graduating seniors this year. 
that not only did we have to split it over three days, we also had to split it over multiple rooms. So um, Thursday, May 9, Tuesday, May 14, and Thursday, May 16. So Tuesday, uh, Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday. Um, in these two cases, starting at 3 o'clock on Thursdays, <clears throat> They're a half hour each. Uh, in this case, we have to uh, actually change rooms uh, because this room became unavailable, so we moved to that room. Uh, on this Tuesday, uh, they're running back to back with just a break in the same room. So, um, so it's very important, I believe, for, for majors, intended majors, I think it's very important that you come to at least one of these. So perhaps you have a, 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 a friendship with somebody here and you want to go to at least theirs. It'd be great if you can go to more than one. Uh, but pick one, pick more than one, and come to see what it's like to do the capstone. Okay? Yeah. Will these be online as well? It's, that's not clear. It's not clear if they'll be videoed yet. Because there's so many days, so many, so long, so many hours, uh, it's not clear yet that anyone from the library staff is willing to volunteer the time. Uh, it's being shopped around. People are being asked. Uh, so uh, if they can do it, uh, it'll be videoed. If not, and uh, I don't know, maybe we could set up a phone or something. Maybe we could use this. <laughs> okay. So uh, there's a, there's a lot the, you know these are your uh, this is not your cohort but these are your colleagues these people are about to uh, uh, fly the nest and um, uh, go on into the work world so I, I hope that you can come and see what the process is like okay Bless you. thanks. If you want to take a picture of it, uh, or maybe this will get online. You can put it in yeah. our group. Hmm? On Schoology, you can put it in our group. Um, what, you took a picture and you'll put it in the group? Or? I could do it. Yeah, 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 that's right. Um, okay. And then we go to dinner. And we're going to do something cool for dinner this year. Um for like the last n years, we've gone to Red Robin, and that's no fun. Nice. Yeah. It's not all, but it's just no, it's just the seniors and uh, a plus one uh, if they if they have uh, want to. Okay. So uh, I know this little mom and pop Italian restaurant that has a room in the back. Does everybody know Luigi's? Okay. Yeah, Luigi's is nice. I like Luigi's. So. Okay. Check out this code. Uh, now, this is a smaller room, so tell me, is that okay in the back? Okay. Uh, hopefully, the attention is now here on the video. Actually, I have to stand perfectly still. All right. So let's take a look. Uh, I've created a class, and uh, there is a static method. Why is this a static method? Well, notice that it, like many static methods, it, it's going to work on a whole bunch of foos, not just one foo. If it's going to work on only, if a method only works on one foo, then there's no reason, you, you know, you don't make it static. It'll work on this foo. Right? So add foos is just a loop that's going to be pushing back uh, a bunch of new foos. So that's like your new rockets, right? Okay. Now bar, uh, the only thing it does is see out. Uh, so here's some of our first learning. Uh, using printouts for debugging is as old as programming and uh, has never gone down in value. It's a very, very powerful debugging technique. So here are a couple of uh, macros provided by the preprocessor. 
that will help you. So when you uh, print this, underscore, underscore, function, underscore, underscore, will turn into the whatever function you're inside of. So this will be printed out as bar. Right? Underscore, underscore, line, underscore, underscore, will be replaced with 15. And no matter how the code moves around, if I simply went like this, it would now be printing 20 if I recompiled. So that line number is always accurate. So that can be handy, uh, especially with a technique that uh, we'll look at later. All right, so here's the, the static method add foos. It's going to add um, uh, uh, some number of foos. Uh, let's review. There's a default argument here, a default value. A reminder that setting a default, there are two concerns when setting a default value. One is once you specify a default value, all the remaining parameters must also have default values. That's concern number one. And the other thing is, is that you only get to specify the default value once. And it's the first time the compiler sees the definition, the declaration. Okay. So down here is the second time we're seeing add foos. So you can't put if I tried to put the equals 10 here, it would be an error. I would have to, uh, uh, in fact, it would be an error. The first time, the only place it works for a default value is the first time the compiler sees the, the declaration. Any questions about that? All righty. Uh, so here we are. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, not this, but this. Okay, so what do you think this program is going to do? going to add 10 foos to the vector v and then it's going to iterate over all the members of v uh, calling bar for each one so you might imagine this is rockets and calling step or calling draw right in the fleet <coughs> so uh, let's try it Um, here's something else. There is the history command. And um, if you look at the, what's printed out here, you see all these numbers. So these are all the things that I have looked at in the past. And uh, if I go backwards, I can see, for example, that... Uh, so uh, 1191, uh, so I could say 1191, and I get that command. Another uh, a bang thing you can do with bang is bang bang, and you get the previous command, no matter what that was. Okay? All right, so I've compiled it. Let's run it. And uh, it says that you uh, entered bar on line 15, and it did it 10 times. Sound good? Uh, let's see. You let me see uh, zero. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to modify the code. And this came up a lot last night. So after... I've added 10 valid foos. Let me manually push back a, a null pointer. Okay. 
So this came up when you added the probability uh, of spawning a rocket. Uh, so sometimes you would not spawn a rocket, yet a null pointer was being pushed onto the back of the fleet. Right, so let's try it now. And run it. Oh, crap. It's a robocall. <sighs> Just stop, damn it. I forgot to put it in airplane mode. And I killed the recording. Oh, shit. All right. So uh, let's wait. Um, no, this one. But that has already uploaded. So uh, this uh, this needs to stop. No, nope. okay.